and there's difference in altitudes that make a difference in in how your car reacts even. What was your biggest surprise on the trip? I mean, other than I did it type thing, what was the biggest surprise for you with the performance of this engine? Well, and I'll, I'll have to go back to, I stopped at Flagstaff, and we just walked in because we had two people, and the other driver just couldn't drive. He, he was just flat tired. Mm -hmm. So I walked into a convenience store, got some tea, and the guy inside there looked out there and said, you're the guy that gets 100 miles to a gallon. He picked it out, and we, at that, by that time, we even had all the stickers taped off because we'd got pulled over by cops and everything, wondering why a race car was driving across the nation. But they'd heard about it in Flagstaff. And, and, and it was just, I think that was pretty amazing that, that people were watching and saying, just go out and make this happen because they were just tired at that time of nearly $4 a gallon fuel. I was going to say, you probably have 200 million cheerleaders across America. Anybody that can try to take something and make this into a, a true concept that's going to really perform on, on the highways. And th this trip really did open up some eyes because I, I love the story that you told me before we got on camera that uh, when you were invited to the International Car Show in Detroit back in 2008, the originally, or 2009 rather, uh, you're taking a used car into a new car show. So that, that was really, really unprecedented. Well, it was. And it, because of a concept, you know, they they don't have used cars at a new car show, and and you know to to really get into that and the ability to even get my foot in the door where people could see it from Detroit. I mean, Detroit is hardcore automotive lovers, and they like to see the greatest technology that's out there. And I had that opportunity to be there, and I was there. And there was a lot of people that said, wow, you know, so that really opened up a lot of eyes right there. And Doug Palmer was back in 2010 and with a partner, and we've got, uh, a, I guess, a great success story to talk about with a partnership out of uh, a gentleman in Indiana, too. Well, I, I call it a team. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no I in team, and it's not, it's not about Doug. It's about making things happen that's going to be good for everyone. You know, this would have been easy to sell and you'd never heard about it ever again. But it, this is about, a, I think, a bigger dream, you know, um, changing where we're at in the United States, to back to work, back to exporting uh, an engine that's not, that, that's not made anywhere. That, I mean, if there was 100 mile per gallon engines out there, they'd be in every car already. Uh, so the export's going to be there. Worker's going to be there because we're going we're to start here, and that's why we're here in Wauseon, where right here in Ohio trying to make it start here. That this engine is, uh, I guess, alive and well, so to speak, in, in a car called the, the Verde. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, that's the other team. I, I call it a team because we're, we're two different companies, but he, he has a car. Um, it's a supercar. It's a, you know, a, a Ferrari type of car, um, a two-door sports car. Um, exclusive type um, the the people have money for those technologies they the rich have money they don't they tend to to help you get things started by buying the 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 new products that are out there mm -hmm. so that's why that car is out there and uh, it's a beautiful car you know I, we had it at the Detroit Auto Show this year had a lot of a lot of people looking at it I mean um, it was even, I, it even made part of the list of new cars. You know, it was in the short list. They looked at it to be one of the best, best design cars. So it's a really nice looking car. But that's, that's where the, the engine's gonna start at. I see it going, you know, I originally looked at the SUV and truck market. We have mainly SUVs and trucks out there that in Ohio you know we need. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Sure. We, we have families that get in those in your in our vans and and we commute um, trucks are used every day we put things in the back of it I mean you rake your leaves up you you haul things with your with your truck we we like our trucks so that's why I originally made the engine for it was designed for the truck market and the SUV type of market and that, that leads into another aspect. You're not just talking like these, these upper-end cars, because with a Verde, you're talking a price tag just shy of $200,000. It's not 
every family is going to run out and pick one of those up. The development, I mean, you, you've got vision to uh, not only for, I, I guess, consumer use, of agricultural use down the line, too, and developing this engine to help out a variety of folks. Well, you know, agriculture is, is looking at, at needs, too. I mean, they're, let's just say they have pumps that pump their water that, that move things. And, I mean, just the simple things. You know, and, we're, and that doesn't even count for the tractors and combines and every other aspect. We all have to eat. So, I mean, to make it cheaper is better. You know, try to bring this, this backwards. I say, you know, inflation seems to always keep on going up, but it never stops. But, you know, if we don't have that, that price tag on it, this can slow. You're really a man of vision. I mean, how long will it be, do you think, in Doug's best vision, to tell me that uh, I could be driving a car and say, my buddy Doug put this engine in this car that I'm driving, away from that $200,000 price tag, by the way? 